All right, gang, welcome back. It's another Glenn the Modium podcast here. This is Glenn, and today I got a real fun video for you. Well, okay, not so much video, more like me talking with a still screen. But nevertheless, this is a list of top 10 annoying coworkers. Now, of course, this is in no specific order, but I've uh, been in the workforce for a very long time, and I've actually picked out 10 very specific type of coworkers that I had the uh, pleasure the pleasure of working with. I'm not going to mention names because, you know, you never know. They might watch this channel, but they might know who they are. Maybe. Or not because, you know, self-absorbed people don't always remember all the dumb stuff they did. Anyway, let's start. Um, let's see. Number 10, I have what I call the controlling spouse. And now, let's see. Let me reiterate. Uh, controlling spouse is basically the kind of person who's always glued to his phone. Um, he, you know, it, it's usually a guy, nine times out of 10, it's usually a guy. He's, you know, controlling husband. He's got to know where his wife is at or his girlfriend or his fiance is at literally every minute of every single day. And it's bad enough now that we're in the, we're in the Twitter age. We're in the text age where, you know, it, I mean, yeah, you know, a lot of young couples like to text with each other. It's a lot more convenient, but sometimes you get that one person that's just completely utterly obsessive like he can't even let his wife or girlfriend or whoever whoever he's with excuse me turn my fan off here he can't let anyone who he's with spend not even five minutes alone without his supervision or with his approval and i know i'm not trying to say all guys are like that but the majority of the controlling spouses i've seen have been dudes i'm just saying i'm just saying Um, well, I, I actually got a funny story about that too, actually. Um, first one, uh, my brother-in-law, he's a truck driver. I remember him bringing a dude home. Um, it was like a young kid about probably early twenties. He's engaged. I think he was engaged. Uh, he was like this avid, like he was not so much of a gamer. He was just like obsessed with the God of War franchise. The God of War franchise, if you're not a gamer, is basically about an angry, angry guy who's doused in ash so he's like white i don't want to say angry white guy because it's not entirely accurate but he's just a really really angry guy it's 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 got a good story and uh you know quick time events if you're into that thing but this guy was like interested in like that's all he ever would talk about you know and i, I kind of got a look of how i used to be as a gamer where i was only obsessed with playing certain games and that's all i would ever talk about i'm like man my friends must think i was nuts so uh but anyway i remember this guy like, he would talk, because he brought him home, you know, to eat dinner with us one night, and uh, he kind of pawned him off, my brother-in-law pawned him off on me, because he got to deal with this dude on the road, talking endlessly about either God of War, or he's on the phone, talking to his girl, making sure, what, knowing exactly what she's doing, over and over and over and over and over, and arguing with her. And I'd imagine he wanted to break away from that, so I got to sit and hear this guy talk about God of War. But then, during the conversation, he gets up, he's already gone, I thought, phew, what a relief. I look out my window... And he's on the phone. I can hear somebody yelling, yelling, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're supposed to call me. Blah. Well, he was out there yelling at his wife. Um, now, what does this have to do with work? Well, that's where the second story comes in. I actually worked with a guy when I uh, did maintenance. Um, th this guy was also glued. His, his phone was practically glued to his ear or to his face. Um, he, he would always find time to pee away from work. Like, like if it's... And, and the worst thing about working with that guy is he'd always drag me along to do jobs that he can't do. He doesn't want to do it by himself. But when I need, when I need help, he's nowhere to be found. Or he, or he likes to take over. Like, you know, like in my last video when I ripped on Christians, like the controlling Christians, he's, he's basically like that. Like, real, like he's, got to, he's got to have control. But uh, what annoys me more is that I did a huge workload at my, at my company where this guy would end up going to like the trailer or he'd go in a back parking lot and he's just either arguing with his wife or he's telling her to drop everything she's doing. doesn't matter if she's taking care of the kids to bring him a sandwich or a soda and like tells her, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, where you at, where you at, hurry up, hurry up, where you at, where you at now? You were there five minutes ago. This take you five minutes to drive over here. You know, this guy's a piece of work. Like, this this guy probably couldn't tie his own shoes without his wife doing it for him. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised, because, I, mean, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to say the guy is a total piece of shit, but most of the time he was. Excuse my language. Um, 
and it, it got it got to the point to where you know I was the one taking all the blame for uh, Mister. I can't go five minutes without calling my wife and nagging at her, and you know. I've, but you know, it's funny. I've never met a, a woman who would call her husband ten times a day. I mean, I, I'd imagine women probably got a lot better things to do than worry about what their husbands are doing. I mean, if she ends up finding out that he might be cheating on her, you know, it, it's going to be worse regardless. Um, but I, I wonder if that insecurity probably stems from, you know, I don't want, I don't want my girl doing anything suspicious. You know, that's, that's, that's a lot of insecurity, you know, for somebody who would claim to say that, you know, they have strong personality, uh, you know, the control, the whole control freak thing going on. It, it's really just insecure. But yeah, if you've ever dealt with a, the uh, controlling spouse coworker, I can imagine they suck and you'd probably be better off with somebody else. Although there is the other, there's another similarity and that brings me to number two, the lazy slacker. Um, continuing my story with the controlling spouse coworker that I had, um, I don't know if, I wouldn't say maybe he wasn't so much lazy, but it felt like you're always doing his work on top of yours. Um, and it's not just related to that, like, uh, you go, you work with somebody, but you can't really rely on them for anything, you know, or like, okay, he, you have your own tasks to do, and then they have their own tasks to do, but then come to find out deadlines approaching, and then this lazy coworker browsed YouTube and social media, because apparently some companies are really lax like that, um, and so nothing got done, so now you're basically tackling his workload. And the worst part is he's not even the least bit grateful that you're doing his job. He's like, either either he's like, well, yeah, I could have got it done, but there's just so many other things. And then he whips out the cell phone and goes into another room and he's yakking to one of his stupid friends. And <laughs> it's worse. I, I, I'm not trying to rip on the millennials because I, I like the millennial generation. Um, I'm, even though I'm, ba I'm barely a millennial myself, I'm more like late Gen X type of guy. Um, but uh like some of them, especially new, this new younger generation, man, like they cannot let go of those memes. Like they, they find a good meme and he's already, he's texting, he's tweeting. And you know, you're kind of looking at him with their hand on your hip. You're like, dude, what the hell are you doing? He's like, oh no, man, this is cool. This is cool. Um, yeah, but the lazy coworkers tend to suck, especially when you work in a team, you're always picking up somebody else's slack. And I know there's probably a lot of people out there who's got to deal with that one person who cannot do the workload by themselves. And the thing is, it's not that we don't want to do the other person's workload, but it's like, if you're falling behind, ask for help before it gets too late. But a lot of times they never ask for help. They, in their minds, they're thinking, well, I'm going to get this done, but they wait till the last minute. You know, and then they're like, oh, crap, I'm way in over my head. And then everybody has to pitch in and help. But it's repeated, 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 repeated. Eventually, the lazy slacker gets fired at some point. Either that or the whole team gets fired because of that slacker. And there's no discipline going on. Anyway, um, my next one is an interesting one. It's called the polar bear. Yes. Uh, number three. Did I start with ten or did I start with, okay, let's do eight. It's eight. Number eight is polar bear. Um, and I want to try to say this without going into fat shaming territory, but let me describe you what a polar bear is. Um, if you've worked in an office environment before, there's going to be that one person in that office who wants to have the AC cranked up all day long. You probably know who this person is. They're probably a little heavy set. Okay, not, maybe not a little, probably really, really heavy set. And they can't deal with the discomfort of sweating. Even if they're, you're, they're wearing the least amount of clothing they can, that's office appropriate. But everyone else, you're dressed up in coats and parkas and beanies. And you're still cold because the polar bear doesn't want to make a little compromise to make everyone else comfortable. Instead, we have to make the polar bear comfortable because they decided to eat unhealthy foods for a really, 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 really long time and didn't want to exercise. And, you know, I, I don't know, this, this is going into fast shaming territory, but the thing that annoys me the most is because I've actually had a couple instances with the polar bear. Um, one of them was my former roommate. Um, you know, it, 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 it gets messed up when you have to have the AC on during the freaking winter. Okay, I don't care. Even if it's in Arizona, dude, you don't need the AC on in De December. Open a freaking window. Open a freaking window, put a fan on you. Okay, don't let, don't let everyone else suffer because you're too obese to do anything about it. 
Now I know. See, now, see, I just fat shamed. I just fat shamed. So I am waiting for the witch hunt to put me on social media and say this guy's a bastard. And uh, and I mean, they wouldn't be wrong exactly. But you know, I, I I used to be a fat guy myself. Okay, but I wasn't at the point where I was making other people uncomfortable to suit my needs. You know, I I, I just had to deal with the fact that I was overweight. Okay, I mean, I was the guy with the man boobs and big old gut and. People in my family or my friends would call me fat boy all the time. So, you know, trust me, I've been there. Um, anyway, my ne uh, number seven, and that is the preacher. Okay, my last video, I ripped on religion. Um, I'm not done. I have what I like to call the preacher. He is the coworker who's either just found religion or he's really religious, but to the point to where that's all he does at work. He goes into work and he talks nothing except God or uh, whatever religion he's really with, but it's usually God. Um, um, and they want to sell, it, it, it's like they, you feel like they're trying to sell you on their religion. And a lot of it is through guilt tripping, fear, manipulation. You know, like the, you, the guilt trip is, you know, if you have, a, if you mention that you might have a problem at home, he'll probably say, well, you know, you're not, you're not right with God. That's why, you know, you have diabetes or that's why you, that's why your girlfriend's cheating on you, or that's why people treat you like crap is because you're not right with God. He's trying to sell you using guilt. Uh, and then another one is, uh, and let's see, what's it? We'll get fear. You know, you know, you're going to hell, you know. You know, if you don't get so right with God, you're going to hell. You know how many times I had to deal with that crap? I mean, I, I know I, I live, live in a religious community, and me complaining about religion is like complaining that there's burgers on a grill. But, uh, <laughs> um, but no, the, Preachers are annoying, you know, and uh, me dealing with it personally, you know, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to justify their crappy behavior, but the thing is, it's, it's one thing that you're religious and that's great, you know, and if you want to share, okay, that's great, but some, some of you dudes, you push it a little too far. You want to make, it, cause you, I know you purposely make, want to make people feel insecure about themselves because they're not following your precious religion. Well, you know what? You're not exactly perfect yourself. Trust me, because you're not getting your work done. Yeah, you're too busy preaching about God and the gospel that we're the ones doing your own workload. But of course, you're going to say, well, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And that means that that's their way of saying, well, I don't have to do the work. I just want to stand there and just preach all freaking day. You know what? Why don't you quit the, why don't you quit the job you're in now and then be a pastor at a church? And then you'll really know what it's like to struggle because nowadays church culture is dying down and churches aren't making as much money. But I digress. All right. I'm going to my uh, number six, and that's the oh my god guy or girl. Um, this is the coworker that brings all their drama to work. You know, the, the person every single day, there's something new and exciting and dramatic going on in their lives. I actually became this stereotype a while back because, you know, I, I grew up always being constantly picked on. And some of these were my coworkers are doing that picked on me a lot and you know i guess over time i started developing this weird okay i need to rant and rave over everything that's wrong with my life because why the hell is it happening to me turns out some of my coworkers are dicks who knew but uh you know you, you tell somebody you can find you find your yeah you can find your coworkers their secrets and then to go and tell other people and they laugh at, at it for shits and giggles you know shitty people but uh oh, the oh my god girl takes it to a new extreme where they 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 want everyone to go. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, pat you on the back. It'll get better. But they they get that reinforcement and they keep doing it. And at some point, people get tired of it. And you know, and it gets worse because when you get tired of it, you don't want to engage in that conversation. They feel isolated, left out, and that's when you start getting into the whole. You know, if no one's gonna talk to me, then I'm gonna do something drastic. Um. <laughs> Okay, this is starting to get depressing. Huh. You know, like, see, let's see, oh my, the oh my god guy, maybe he's dealing with a nasty breakup, you know, you, you probably have seen stuff in shows where you got, you got that one divorced guy, he's going through a nasty, nasty divorce, and he wants to let the world know that women suck. Or you got the girl that, the this one guy at work does not know she's alive because she doesn't make any attempt to get his attention, turns out he was married but she still wants his attention anyway and she's freaking out about it it's, it's a big deal so you know your work turns into like 90210 complete with the obnoxious models with the wind blowing 
and you got the you know some of the some of the more good looking dudes at work you know they they have this little click and even a even right on cue a radio or a tv plays some dramatic soap opera music and i'm standing in a corner going you know what i'm just going to go over here i got some filters to change um okay i know i guess I, you know i thought i had more to talk about on that one um oh next one number 5 the stuck up debutante Okay, you, you ever seen those uh, really annoying uh, runway mo- Well, not annoying, but you know how runway models have that, like, angry, don't come near me stare as they walk down the aisle? You know, they got that, they got that nasty pose. You know, they, 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 like their eyes, they look like you're staring daggers at you. Well, so you, you might have this stuck-up debutante girl at work. She's the girl, she's like the alpha B-word. She's the alpha B-word. You know, she's the she's the main girl. She, you know, she's probably a department leader, but she's very very toxic. You know, she dresses up like you know she dresses up every day for work, but she's like incredibly stuck up. She's, um, she puts down other people. You know, especially to make herself feel better. She's the kind of person that's not afraid to chew any of her fellow coworkers out in front of a whole crowd of people because it it boosts in a weird way. It boosts her confidence. And I'm not saying it's all women, because there are dudes that do that, too. I, I, I've, I've had people that do this to me all the time. But, of course, it's when you stand up to them. And I know I encourage stand up to them. It may cost you your job. It may not. It might. You might just get triggered to HR, where the stuck-up debutante will probably break down in tears because you stood up to her. Because, God forbid, you have a, you have a spine at work. Okay. Uh, number four, we got the foodie. Now, I don't have any personal qualms to get the foodie. But the foodie tends to be a very, very messy coworker. Um, you know, I mean, let's say you have an environment and you have a fridge. You know, people put their lunches in there, but the foodie brings in fast food and you know half-eaten pizzas and Gatorades, and half the fridge is already claimed to the foodie. You know, the, the foodie has all this extra food in there, and the worst part is he doesn't share with anybody. You know, the, the foodie has to have all his food; it's, it's leftovers, and he's the one that uses the microwave a lot. Probably doesn't clean up after themselves, so the microwave's really dirty and spotty, and you might work in a place where there's no janitor, so you're responsible for cleaning up after yourselves, but the foodie does not clean after themselves. And it gets worse, because his desk has probably got a lot of fast food wrappers, cups, and um, bits of food everywhere, and I I was kind of guilty of this at first, too, because I, I used to eat lunch over my keyboard, and then one day, like, my alt key got stuck, and I was like, oh my gosh, so I ended up having to take a... Yeah, I, I became the oh my god guy. Who knew? Um, <laughs> no, but I, I end up have to like eat away from my desk, and I'm very self conscious of how I eat now because I'm like my my desk is covered in food. Now every now and then I might leave an apple or an orange or a, a you know a pack of crackers because I I was too full to eat it or I just didn't ran out of time. Um, um, but you know the foodie's not a bad person, but sometimes you just wish they would not eat so much around you just eat they can eat whatever they want at home just not work all right number three the chronic smoker ah do you know any coworkers that smoke i know a lot of coworkers that smoke and i used to not really care about smokers but there are some of you guys you smoke more than you work okay like, I think, you know, one of the things that I've noticed when people try to get a job at my company is, I remember I actually got a friend a job years and years and years ago. The first thing out of his mouth was, so what are the smoke breaks like? I go, why does it matter? He looks at me, he's like, well, dude, I gotta have my cigarettes. He's like, you get, you get a smoke break? Well, how, how many do I get? And I'm like, well, you get a 15 minute break, but you gotta divide it into five minutes. Like, well, I don't know, that's not enough, man. It takes me at least 15 minutes to smoke a cigarette. And so now you get so you get these coworkers that like literally every single hour around the clock, every single hour, you they'll be out there for five, ten minutes smoking. They're always smoking. And especially now with cell phones, they're on their smoking and on their cell phones. And it's the same group of people. They're always out there smoking. And they're and then they wonder they wonder why they're job is so stressed because for every 10 to 50 minutes on the hour you, that's almost literally half their shift they're spinning out there smoking look i got no qualms against smokers but the, you know some of them some of these dudes you guys take it too far 
<laughs> and it's not just, and it gets worse with some of the chronic smokers. Maybe it's, it's some of the Kingmanites that I live here with, but some of these dudes got no freaking class, dude. I knew one person who would used to go out, I guess this person was always broke because he bought too much cigarettes and a bunch of junk food. Well, they go around the parking lot picking up cigarette butts and putting them in a little Ziploc bag. That's freaking gross. These are people, they actually pick up cigarettes. One guy actually I work with, he, he takes a puff out of cigarette and he puts it on the ground. He leaves it on the ground. It's still lit. He leaves it on the ground. He, he doesn't know if people spit there or a lizard took crap there or a bird tried to nip at it. No, he picks it back up, puts it back in the mouth and smokes it like it was nothing. It was nothing. I was like, no class, man. No freaking class. <laughs> so, you know, and it's hard. I mean, it's bad enough. I don't, I can't, I can't date a smoker. I don't smoke. But now I, I see this and it's like, Ugh. All right. We're getting, we're getting to the end, guys. Bear with me here. Number two, cell phone with a body. Okay, this is ripping on dudes who and people who are just glued to their cell phone. Look, I get it. We're the information age. Okay, we have cell phones. We got we got social media. But there are some dudes you cannot go literally five seconds without having a freaking phone in your face. Okay, look, I get it. When I take my break, I'm on my cell phone. I check maybe NeoGaf or I check Forum or maybe a dating app. Yeah, sue me. Um, but you got dudes during a the shift, they just pull out their phone and they're like, oh, oh cool. <laughs> My friend posted a meme on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Well, can you help me live this first? Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweet this to the blah, blah. I'm going to tweet this to my friend. Meanwhile, the server hits my foot because the other person didn't decide to. Never mind. <laughs> um, I, oh, you know, speaking of cell phone with the body, that's basically... You can also call the controlling spouse a cell phone with a body because, you know, that, that's what a controlling spouse does. They're on their phone all the freaking time, checking in on their spouse, making sure they're not doing anything. And it's worse now. The cell phone's got tracking, so now they can track their spouse. Oh, my God, man. Get some freaking therapy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's okay. You can bring your cell phone to work, but, dude, it's okay. Put it away. Don't be like Ryan from The Office. You know, that guy is always glued to his phone. He's always glued to his phone. Like, that's his, he says, that's my connection to the outside world in the middle of a rave. Okay. Let that one sink in for a minute. Now, okay. My number one, although it's not really number one, is interrupter of speech. Okay, there might be a coworker there. You're, he's engaged in a conversation to you, and you try to answer the question, but they keep talking over you. I actually have a coworker right now that does this. He, he's a cool guy. He means no harm. But he's not aware that he talks over people. You want to get your point across, you're trying to explain. But it's always a one-sided conversation. I don't know if he wants to get the last word in, or maybe he's just trying to, he, he likes to talk. He, maybe he just likes to talk, but he's talking over you. You can never get a word in edgewise. It's worse when you're at a meeting, you're trying to get a point across, and he's always interrupting, talking over you. Even if you even tell him, say, hey, look, let me finish, let me finish. And then as you're trying to finish, he continues in. Oh, by the way, it's like, let me finish. But no, you know what? This, this ain't as bad. This ain't as bad as actually number 10. I think I got these backwards now that I think about it. Anyway, this video is dragged out for too long. I'm going to end it here and upload it on YouTube. And if you know any annoying coworkers, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, this is Glenn Ammonium signing out. Have a good one.